Today, we're delving into the heart of Charles Schwab's Modern Wealth Survey, uncovering what wealth really means to Americans today. The burning question they explored, at what personal net worth threshold do you consider someone in your area to be wealthy? Remember, net worth is determined by subtracting the total value of your liabilities from your total value of your assets. Let's go. Americans on average see 2.2 million as the wealth milestone. Yet here's where it gets interesting. Almost half, about 48% feel wealthy at a much lower average net worth at $560,000. This contrast unveils a paradox in our wealth perception. In urban areas like San Francisco, the bar for financial comfort hits 1.7 million, soaring to 4.7 million for the wealth label. Similarly, Los Angeles and New York set the wealthy benchmark at 3.5 million and 3.3 million respectively. From my own time in these cities, these figures resonate. In the Bay Area where I grew up, even modest homes with the tiny footage bear a big price tag. And in Boston, living expenses, especially housing, down streets like Newberry is notable, with homes frequently reaching upwards of two to three million dollars easily. Millennials are reshaping the concept of wealth. Today, 57% of millennials feel wealthy, outpacing the 48% average across other generations. This is particularly intriguing considering the economic narrative surrounding American millennials, born between 1981 and 1996, who've often been the butt of economic jokes. Confronted with two major economic crises, the Great Recession, which led to a scarcity of jobs and soaring student loan debt, to COVID-19 pandemic, which drove US unemployment to the worst since the Great Depression, and simultaneously a spike in the housing market that put home ownership out of reach. Yet, against this backdrop, millennials with their avocado toast and half decaf lattes in hand report feeling wealthy. I think millennials have forged a pretty distinctive perspective on wealth here. They have leveraged social media for information, valuing experiences like travel, and champion mental health. With these lens, wealth is perceived less as an accumulation of financial assets and more as a collection of experiences and a healthy mindset. Now, as we continue, I think this evolving mindset is reflected in the modern wealth survey, which poses a thought-provoking question. What does being wealthy mean to are increasingly defining wealth in terms of well-being rather than just financial metrics. It seems that for many, true wealth is no longer just a number. It's a state of living and being. Money, it turns out, isn't the sole barometer of wealth. Intriguingly, more than 70% prioritize a fulfilling personal life over a successful career. Equally, 70% believe that the joy derived from experiences far outweighs the satisfaction of owning a number of different possessions. For 62% of Americans, quality time and nurturing relationships with their loved ones are the ultimate riches. And what about the workplace flexibility? Since the pandemic, 60% value the ability to work where and when they want over a heftier salary. This finding resonates deeply with me, especially after becoming a mother. The survey highlights a modern dilemma, the comparison game, fueled by social media, which is reshaping how we gauge our wealth. Nearly half of millennials and Gen Z feel wealthier if they can match their friends' lifestyle. About one third are influenced by social media to make purchases and financial decisions. So what does this all tell us? That wealth is becoming a more holistic concept encompassing life satisfaction and personal freedom. But it also raises questions like, how does social media shape your view of wealth? Are we moving towards a healthier understanding of what it means to be wealthy? It'd be great to hear your thoughts. Leave your comments in the comment box below. The study reveals that only about a third of Americans have taken the time to document their financial strategies. Yet this step seems to make a significant difference. Among those with a written plan, a whopping 92% report feeling a stronger sense of control over their finances and more confident about achieving their money goals. On the flip side, about 65% of people are navigating their financial journey without any formal plan. That's a majority flying blind, and it's concerning because success rarely happens by chance. Think about it. You wouldn't expect to win Wimbledon without years of practice and strategy. Similarly, building wealth is hardly a spontaneous event. It requires careful, deliberate planning. If you're unsure where to begin, you can check out my video on six accounts you need to manage your money over here. 
In dissecting the landscape of American wealth, I'm reminded of the insightful Federal Reserve Survey of Consumer Finances conducted every three years. This comprehensive study paints a picture of the average net worth across various age groups. For those under 35, the average net worth exceeds over $180,000. It climbs to over $549,000 for age 35 to 44. And as we hit the midlife mark from 45 to 54, we see this average approaching the million dollar milestone, 975,000. Those nearing retirement between 55 to 64 have accumulated over 1.5 million and the 64 to 75 group even more at 1.7 million. Interestingly, the 75 plus demographic sees a slight dip to 1.6 million, likely due to retirement spending, including healthcare costs. These figures, though substantial, still fall short of the $2.2 million benchmark that many consider as wealthy. But let's pivot to the top 10%. Here are the narrative shifts. Those between 45 to 54 are nudging towards the $2 million territory for age 55 to 64, their net worth balloons over 2.96 million. And it's a similar story for 66 to 74, who is shy of 3 million. Even though 75 and older boosts a hefty 2.69 million, which intriguingly aligns more closely with the 2.2 million wealthy standard from our survey. So what do these numbers mean for us? They highlight a stark wealth gradient that intensifies with age and peaks among the highest earners. It's food for thought in our own financial journeys and wealth distribution in America. Friends, thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, hit the like button, share with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe for more. And if you're interested in digging deeper, check out my next video on seven things the rich don't buy. See you in the next one.